Hi everyone, welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be looking at sharpening images and we're going to be looking at a particular way of sharpening images. So there are lots of different tools you can use. Lightroom's got its own sharpening tools, so has Photoshop. All programs usually have some kind of tools for sharpening. But we're going to look at actually creating our own sharpening layer using a high pass filter. And the reason you might want to do this is well, you might not have something like Lightroom, uh, you might just be using Photoshop, um, and even though Photoshop does have sharpening filters, uh, you might just want something with a little bit more control. And um, I'll show you how you can set that up um, in Photoshop now. So here we are, this is an image I took in Scotland last year, and uh, I was pleased with the, you know, the subject of the image, and because I wanted to get somebody walking past this graffiti on the wall with the wings and get them lined up perfectly with the, the wings. Uh, which I managed to do, but unfortunately, uh, I, just, I think my show speed wasn't high enough. And if we look closely at that, if we zoom in, it's it's very soft, um, and it's probably too soft to be honest. But what we can do is to sharpen that up a little bit, and it it still won't be perfect, but it might be passable. So, like I said, we're going to use a high pass filter. So the first thing we need to do is duplicate the layer we have now. And the quickest way to do that is to press Command and J on your keyboard, or Control and J if you're using a PC. And that will just duplicate your layer. You'll see now in the Layers palette we've got the background and layer 1. And we need to put the High Pass filter on the layer that's on top, so layer 1 in this case. And we'll go up to Filter, and down to Other, and select High Pass. And that makes everything look grey and strange. <laughs> Um, what you're going to need to do is play around with the radius and this will all depend on the size of your image. If you've got like a really high megapixel image you're going to need to have your radius set higher. If it's uh, a lower resolution image it's going to be a lower number. But you're wanting to get it to a, if you start on nothing you see it's just all grey and you want to just bring it up until you just start to see the outlines coming through. If you have it too high if the lines are too strong, you're going to end up with over sharpening and it's just going to look very plasticky and have this really weird kind of slight halos around the edges and look a bit strange basically. So for this image, I'm probably just going to go to about um, maybe 1.3. I'll click OK. And then the only thing we need to do now to make that sharpen the image below is go to our um, blending mode, which is this little drop down box here, just um, about two rows down from where it says layers. Uh, you've got this drop down box, it'll be normal by default, and you drop that down and go down to overlay. And if I just turn that layer on and off, you'll see what that, that's doing. So like I said, it's not going to be perfect with an image like this because it really was so soft to start with, but it definitely definitely adds some sharpening to it and makes it a lot more usable, particularly when you zoom out. So that's one way of using it. There is another way where you can apply the layer to the image and then have a bit more control over it by also using a mask. So that means that you can apply the sharpening just to certain parts of the image rather than the whole thing. So if we have a look at this image, I've got the background out of focus with some shallow depth of field and if I just wanted to sharpen the face, what I would do is apply a mask after I've used the high pass filter so that I can just sharpen just the face or parts of the face and not sharpen the background which I want to be soft and, and blurred. So if I go through the process again, Command and J or Control and J, up to Filter, Other, High Pass and you'll see on this image it's quite high resolution this one um, so I have to bring the radius up quite a bit higher to start seeing those lines come through. And I'll bring it to around about 10, I think. Click OK. Change my blending mode to overlay. And you'll see that adds 
some nice sharpening. But like I said, what if you don't want it on the entire image? Well, if I go to layer, layer mask, and then hide all, that hides everything on that high pass layer now. And I can reveal parts of that layer by brushing it back in on the mask. So I'll select my brush tool, which is over here, or you can press B on your keyboard. And I'll need to select white, because black will hide and white will unhide, if that's a word. <laughs> uh, reveal. White will reveal um, areas that I want to sharpen. So let's say I want to sharpen the eyes. I'll start brushing over like that. And you'll see that's sharpened up the eye. We'll do this one. Maybe a bit around the nose, and the mouth. All the areas that we want to draw attention to, basically. And it'd be nice to just sharpen up the texture in the hair there. So you see, it's quite a controlled way. I mean, you can do this in Lightroom as well. You know, you have the brush tool where you can just select areas that you want to, to sharpen. But it's just good to know another way. And there are some times when it's really handy to be able to, to use this method. So there we go. If I just turn it on and off. I'll zoom in a bit. You might be able to see that better. So you can really just sharpen up an image. You don't want to do it too much. If you do it too much, it'll look strange. Uh, always be subtle. Uh, make sure you get your radius slider just so you can just see the outlines uh, and that should work really nicely. So there you go. Sharpening with a high pass filter. I hope it's been useful. If it has, please give the video a like. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, then you can click subscribe down below in the big red button. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.